I am on the western side of Wisconsin near the Pine Barrens area along the St. Croix River and we're gonna go check out a historic area that had its heyday in 1900 till about just before World War II. So let's go check out the Sunrise Ferry. If you head up the river road out of St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin, and then work your way west on these sandy and gravel roads, you'll find a little landing along the St. Croix River with an interesting and somewhat sordid history. Around the turn of the 20th century, the families living in this remote section of western Wisconsin were looking for a way to get their goods and vehicles across the St. Croix River. At this time, there were very few bridges to get you to and from Wisconsin and Minnesota. So these rugged folks pulled their resources and built a small ferry to carry them across the Swift Border River. So one thing that makes this drive so nice is that it crosses over the Trade River. It's very pretty, especially in the fall, but right now it's, it's a little buggy, so I'm going to keep moving. The Sunrise Ferry, or also known as the St. Croix River Ferry, became an important and much used link for both business and leisure travel. In 1922, Lauren Carnes, a founding partner, bought out everyone's shares and became the sole owner of the small wood cable and pulley system ferry. Operating the Sunrise Ferry was a family effort and hard work. The first ferry was covered in tar, leaked terribly, and could hold a car or two. Carnes, with help from a government charter, kept the ferry running, improved the wood ferry to make it more watertight, and also increased its load up to three cars. During the Prohibition years, bootleggers in the area would use the ferry to get their moonshine from Wisconsin down to St. Paul. Of course, these crossings were done in the dark of night, away from the prying eyes of the authorities. So one thing you may have noticed if you're familiar with my channel is the front of my truck looks a little bit different. I just recently put the Schrockworks bumper on it, and I've got a few more things to do with the winch, and then I'm going to install another light. So look for a video for that coming down the road here in a little bit. There's a lot of logging that goes on in this area and the roads are taken care of pretty good but sometimes the conditions can be very wet and very 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 sandy. I would advise driving out here with an all-wheel drive vehicle. If you have a two-wheel drive car and you try to turn around it's very easy to find yourself stuck in the sand.
After the Depression and the construction of several bridges over the St. Croix, the demand for this little ferry dwindled, and in the spring of 1938, the strong current and heavy ice on the St. Croix were just too much for the old ferry's chains, causing it to break free and meet its demise downstream. So I'm standing on the Wisconsin side of the ferry crossing and just over here is where you would end up if you crossed over to Minnesota. So you can imagine what this river would have been like with the high water, the ice, and the fast current. This place is where the uh, ferry broke loose and it ended up downstream in an area they call Wolf Swamp and that was the end of the ferry. If you want to learn more about the ferry and get a better picture than I can give you of the slice of Wisconsin history, just visit the link below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the drive to the ferry. Please subscribe if you want to see more roads like this and give this video a like. That helps me out too. And thanks for watching and I'll see you all down the road. Take it easy.